In a Little League Baseball game, the 145 gram ball enters the strike zone with a speed of 15 meters per second. The batter hits the ball and it leaves the bat with a speed of 20 meters per second in exactly the opposite direction. What is the magnitude of the impulse delivered by the bat to the ball? If the bat is in contact with the ball for 1.5 milliseconds, what is the magnitude of the average force exerted by the bat on the ball? All right. First, let's go ahead and um, draw a little picture. So we have a baseball. It's coming in, and they tell us it is 15 meters per second. Then it hits, it, or it gets hit by the bat, and then it's leaving at 20 meters per second. And it says exactly the opposite direction. So whichever one we decide uh, one of them has to be negative is what I'm getting at. So I'm going to say that the negative 20 or the 20 is moving in the negative direction because remember it's velocity which is a vector which is a magnitude and direction. Okay and um, all I was getting at is if we could have said that the 15 was negative which would make the 20 then positive. Just their opposite which is all they're trying to get at up here. So, um, now that we know what's going on, let's go ahead and make a list of what we know so that we, or so we have the mass of the ball is 145 grams. And let's put that in standard units right away. So if we move it one, two, three, we have 0 0.145 kilograms. Now we know the initial velocity is 15 meters per second and the final velocity is a negative 20 meters per second. And then for the part B, they tell us the time that it's in contact with the bat is 1.5 milliseconds and in standard units, if we move one, two, three, we'll have 0 0.0015 seconds. So for the first part, we're trying to find the magnitude of the impulse, so J. And for the second part, we're trying to find what is the average force that the bat exerted on the ball. Okay, so for part A, we're going to, or for all of them, we're going to use this relationship right here. We have J is equal to F average times time, which is equal to the change in momentum. So for the first part, since we're looking for J, let's use J equal to delta P. So J is equal to P final minus P initial. So now let's go ahead and plug numbers because we're already solved for what we're looking for. So P is mass times velocity, so the mass is 0.145 kilograms times the velocity initial or final is negative uh, 20 meters per second. Then all of that is being subtracted by mass 145 kilograms times the velocity initial was 15 meters per second. All right. So let's go ahead and plug those in. Um, let me grab my calculator. So 0.145 times negative 20, that gives us a negative 2.9 Newton seconds. Or let's see, that's momentum, so that's kilograms times meters per second. Minus 0.145 times 15 is 2.175, 2.175. So if we have a negative 2.9 minus 2.175, that gives us J, let me slide this up. J is equal to negative 5.075 Newton seconds. Now in the question, let's go back up to it real quick, they just want the magnitude 
So um, even though they uh, gave us direction and everything, in this case, since they want the magnitude, we're just going to use the absolute value of this. So rounded, it will be 5.08 newtons times seconds, and that's positive. Okay, so that's the first part. Now we found J, so now let's move on, change color, and let's go ahead and solve for the average force. So this guy up here, this J equals average force times time equals the change of momentum, that's gonna be your best friend at the end of this chapter. Because now that we have J solved for, and they give us time, we can solve for the average force pretty easily. So let's go ahead and rewrite it out so we have it. So we have J is equal to the average force times the time. And we want to isolate the average force. So let's go ahead and divide over time. Divide it over. So now the average force is equal to J, which we already solved for up here, divided by the time, which they gave us up here, and it's 0.0015. Now we just have to plug it in. So the average force is equal to 5.08 newton times seconds divided by the change in time, which we said was 0.0015 seconds. So the seconds go away and we're left with the correct units. And 5.08 divided by 0 0.0015, that gives us 3,386.67 newtons. Now, in mastering physics, they obviously won't want this many significant figures, um, but you can round to however many they tell you they need.